And Mike, member Camille actually did not make a direct hit to New Orleans. It went just slightly east of there, but still the city of New Orleans was in fact devastated by that hurricane. And Karen Carlson just outside New Orleans in Metairie, Louisiana. Karen, we begin with you. Well, Mark, you know, we've been out here for most of the day, and it's been a relatively peaceful situation. But in the last few minutes, it seems as though the mood has started to change quite a bit. People who have been bussed out here and brought out here are saying, where are the buses? We've been promised something, and it is not here. So how will the mega merger between Bank of America and MBNA, one of the world's largest credit card companies, affect consumers? Well, a consumer group is already reacting to the announcement this morning. Karen Carlson joins us now live from Northridge. Good morning, Karen. Good morning to you, Philip. Yes, big concerns all over the country. Big concerns also in Fresno, where the county has actually canceled the flu shot for seniors. $700 million project will be launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base at 10 tomorrow morning. And gravity won't be pulling down any rain, hopefully, <laughs> for that launch. Einstein will be strong. He will win out again. <laughs> A big drop in temperatures earlier this week. Actually, even Thursday, we were seeing Palm Springs close to 90 degrees. So we're looking at a 10 to 15 degree drop in temperatures throughout the Inland Empire along the coast as well. And you can see they're still working really hard out here, vacuuming like crazy. Actually went inside just a few minutes ago. They are still setting up glasses. They're still putting out the chairs and tables. The question now is, will they be done in time when folks start arriving here at 8 o'clock? Well, we'll be here. We'll let you know coming up on Eyewitness News at 11. I'm Karen Carlson, live in West Hollywood. Now back to you, Micah. Sunday morning. Hurricane Katrina now packing sustained winds of 175 miles per hour and threatening the entire Gulf Coast. New Orleans, in the direct path of the fierce storm, has ordered mandatory evacuations. Southern California's heat wave swelters into another day with temperatures heading back toward triple digits. And rapper Suge Knight in a hospital this morning after more violence. This time, he's hit with gunfire. Good morning. It's Sunday, August 28th. I'm John Gregory. And I'm Karen Carlson. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. The Southland will have another heat wave today. Some triple-digit temperatures are again expected in the Los Angeles and Santa Clarita Valleys. We have live team coverage of that heat wave. Eyewitnesses reporter Wendy Burt is live in Santa Monica with how people are handling the high temperatures. But we begin with eyewitness weather and meteorologist Christine Clayberg. Christine? Well, President Bush now speaking out on the dangerous and already deadly Hurricane Katrina. The storm is heading for the Louisiana coast with winds gusting up to more than 200 miles an hour. The president is pledging to do everything in his power to help the people in the path of that storm. Right now it is a Category 5 heading straight for New Orleans, a city, of course, that is below sea level. They have a very sophisticated levee system, but the pumping stations there are only equipped to handle a weak Category 3 hurricane. And for the latest on a mass exodus out of town, we go to ABC's Daria Albinger on how residents are dealing with the threat of the storm. And again, that live picture over Lake Pontchartrain in New Orleans right now. This is what's called a contraflow in effect right now. What it means is basically nobody can head back into the city. Everyone is being forced to leave. And as Hurricane Katrina does bear down on the Louisiana coast, stay with Eyewitness News for continuing coverage of the storm and the damage it is sure to leave behind. A frightening crime that we seem to be reporting more and more often across L.A. An armed robber at a restaurant. This time, three men hit this Denny's in Temple City. The robbery happened at around 9.30 last night while the restaurant was open for business. The men took cash from that register. They also took money from the food servers who said it all happened very quickly. LA County Sheriff's deputies are now searching for the armed robbers. And we are back now at 10.15 in the morning. A live picture of the contraflow. People getting out of New Orleans right now as Katrina starts bearing down on that city, heading in that direction. A Category 5 right now of 175 mile per hour sustained winds. The mayor of that city called for a mandatory evacuation. He called it a, quote, a once-in-a-lifetime event. Even President Bush is urging the residents out there to take that evacuation order seriously, and you can certainly see why. Yeah, and we're expecting landfall sometime tomorrow morning along the Gulf Coast, and it looks like New Orleans is mm -hmm. right in the path. And Mike, as I remember, Camille actually did not make a direct hit to New Orleans. It went just slightly east of there, but still the city of New Orleans was, in fact, devastated by that hurricane. Yeah, well, the, the worst damage, you're right, was from Mobile, Alabama. And with the size of that storm, it looks like that entire area is going to be in some big trouble. Oh, yeah, the whole Gulf Coast is probably going to feel some damage from this storm. Well, we'll have more on Katrina in a bit and also an update on our weather as well. Some summer heat that has been scorching the Southland. And we'll introduce you to a harmonica slim. 
And we are back now at 10.44 in the morning. A nice picture to show you of Malibu. And boy, if you're going to be out today, you're going to want to head to the beaches. Triple digits, possibly even close to breaking some records in certain parts of the valley. It's going to be hot out there. We'll have more on your forecast later. And it's time now to wake up and win. This morning we're giving away free DVDs to Sahara, starring Matthew McConaughey. Where in the hell did you get this? You got 72 hours. Fellas, just bought yourself a boat trip. Ocean explorer Dirk Pitt takes on the adventures of his life when he embarks on a treasure hunt through some of the most dangerous regions of North Africa. He searches for what locals call the Ship of Death, a long-lost Civil War battleship filled with coins. Sahara is in DVD stores this month, but you can win a free DVD this morning. Just log on to our website at abc7.com. Enter the secret password SAND for your chance to win. Well, if you're a kid or a fan of Disney animated movies, you know Lilo and Stitch. The pair is rewarding their fans with a new movie in video stores this week, and our entertainment guru, George Pinocchio, got a special look at the movie. And if you know of any amazing young people, nominate them to be a cool kid. Winners receive a $1,000 savings bond from Greenlight Financial. That's going to do it for us. Have a great day. From Carlson, just outside New Orleans in Metairie, Louisiana. Karen, we begin with you. Well, Mark, you know, we've been out here for most of the day, and it's been a relatively peaceful situation. But in the last few minutes, it seems as though the mood has started to change quite a bit. People who have been bussed out here and brought out here are saying, where are the buses? We've been promised something, and it is not here. They want to know where the food and water is. I don't know if they're running out of it or what the situation is, or if they just can't find it, or if there are so many people that they can't get it to them. I don't know what the situation is with that. We are also seeing that there aren't a lot of people out here in terms of security. A lot of people are concerned that the situation out here could end up getting out of control soon. Now, these refugees, though, really are just one step away from being safe. They've been awaiting transportation out of town, but getting here was literally the fight of their lives. It has finally come, the help so many thousands need, though in some cases it may be too late. The sick and the elderly were among the thousands brought here. So many were hours away from death. After watching people die in her hospital for days, intensive care nurse Doris Gibson walked a mile through flooded streets in the blistering sun. She would rather break the law than see anyone else die. We looted the pharmacy and got the necessary medications for the patients that needed out of Rite Aid Pharmacy, a looted pharmacy. They ran out of medicines. After days of screaming for help, rescuers working nonstop, there are too many to save. Here, people are being driven in by trucks. They're being carried in by helicopter. They're in boats going down a river that used to be a street. That's what Kenneth Lavige had to do when he realized the Coast Guard rescuers at his shelter wouldn't be coming back. Coast Guard coming in for so long, and then at some point they stopped bringing boats in. They didn't tell us they had stopped bringing boats in. They say they were going to get more boats, but they never came back. So you thought you were going to be evacuated, and that, they never came back? That was from a school, yes. There were others, more desperate, stuck on rooftops, swimming in polluted waters. They needed help. They all did. No one can understand why it took so long to get it. If there was a, like, like the tsunami, if there was a there, a day after it happened, it could have been eight here. A day after it happened, and you would not see all of this right now. Now, as you know, local public officials are calling for a complete military occupation to quell the violence that is widespread and horrifying. In fact, yesterday, rescue efforts were suspended. Stranded people died, but the city was so out of control that officials thought it futile to save the lives of those stranded people when those who had survived were killing each other. Reporting live from Metairie, Louisiana, I'm Karen Carlson, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Michelle, back to you. Okay, Karen, thanks very much. Of all the trees in Los Angeles, few are newsworthy. They're pretty much there to line the streets and provide a little shade during an afternoon walk. And while this tree here may not seem like a lot, around here it's become a bit of a celebrity. It's the tree a local lawyer hid behind during a now infamous shooting at the Van Nuys Courthouse. Remarkably, the lawyer survived, and in some ways, the tree got the credit. Did we find any bullets? Because I think he was shooting this way. These women walk this area every day, but now have a new respect for this tree. 
A few regulars have even named it. It's now known as the tree. <laughs> or there, as one guy said, you mean the tree of safety, because <laughs> it saved that man's life. Should have some kind of a plaque there for the poor attorney. The poor that attorney. Artie protected himself. Any embedded bullets? No, I didn't find any. So this was it, huh? Yeah, that was the tree. Yeah, amazing. It's a famous tree. <laughs> what are people saying about the tree? Have they given it a name? Uh, well, too little. Too little, I think, is the name. Too little, why? <laughs> well, it was so small, you know, but uh, it did the job. While some see it on the way to work, others, like Simeon Diaz, make a special trip. So are you here today to look for the tree? That's it right there. I, I, want, I wanted to show my mom. The lawyer was running back and forth like this. Oh. He was back and forth. See? He was back and forth. And then as soon as the tree stopped, he walked out. And back and back. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, he was shooting. And he's not the only one who's reenacted that fateful day with this fateful tree. Just goes to show in this town, even a tree, and a small one at that, can make it big. Karen Carlson, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Yeah, John, it's been almost a month since we've seen any measurable precipitation, but that is all about to change as we have a storm system off of our coast right now. You can see it's this area right here is actually a little to the north. That's not going to necessarily affect us, but it's been pulling up this band of rainfall, this band of moisture, which could be hitting our area later on today. I'm not going to rule out the possibility of some showers come early afternoon, but the bulk of it will be coming a little bit later on in the afternoon right now, though some decent clear skies right now in downtown Los Angeles. Clear so far. Temperatures a little bit chilly, right about 50 degrees right now. That barometer is falling, but we could see the wind start to pick up pretty soon. We're going to see some rain showers. We're looking at between a quarter to a half an inch of rain possible with the system and even more in the mountains. Here's what we're looking at in terms of the highs for today. Beaches and valleys just about the same. Mountains a little bit lower, lower 50s, and the deserts only in the upper 70s. And as you can see, some rain clouds everywhere. The possibility also for thunderstorms. More on the forecast in just a bit. John? Thanks, Karen.